This week, I tackled a coffee table. Well, not only a coffee table, but a table that can go from the height of a coffee table to a dining table. Oh, and because I struggle with designing something that doesn't have storage, I incorporated a sneaky storage spot to put away electronics, but keep them within reach. Let me show you how I made it. This entire table can be made from one sheet of plywood. Of course, you could go with whichever veneer you prefer, but I chose walnut. I moved the sheet to my plywood workbench and got started by breaking it down into smaller pieces with my Triton track saw. The first thing I wanted to do was cut out a large rectangle, which will eventually be cut into the legs. Each leg will be made up from two legs glued together in order to make them one and a half inches thick instead of the standard three quarter. After cutting my two rectangles, I used some DAP weld wood glue to glue them together. When working with plywood, there is typically a front and back side, so be sure to pick your show face before applying glue. Since I didn't want hardware in these parts, I used the dog holes in my armor workbench to clamp the perimeter down, then use weight in the center section until it was dry. While that was setting up, I went back to my track saw and cut what will be the two top pieces. These both have a bevel on all four edges, so I tilted my saw over to the desired angle before making my cuts. Again, making sure I picked my show face as these cuts will make the piece directional. By the way, if you're interested in a cut list and templates for the legs, then I have those available over on my website. By the time I got both of the tops cut out, the leg blank was dry and ready to be cut up into eight legs. Since I have a template, I could have rough cut it over at the bandsaw, then used a router with a flush trim bit to make it perfect. But instead I used my track saw because I didn't leave myself enough room for a router bit's curve. It's no problem though, this was also quick. It just isn't as precise as using a router and template, but in the end, it works. So the way the design works is the table can be used at two different heights. To achieve this, there is a set of tall legs and a set of short legs. Both work independently of each other on a hinge. Then I believe that's it for the pieces needed. Well, other than some simple stretchers that will span in between each set of legs. I made these from the off cuts and over at the table saw. With all of the parts needed now cut out, I started edge banding. Since I'm using walnut plywood, I grabbed my walnut veneer. I'm using two inch on the legs since it's doubled up, then standard three quarter on the single pieces. This edge banding will cover up the end grain of the plywood and give it the look of walnut. To apply it, I stuck my part in my Triton Super Jaws, then used an iron to heat up the adhesive on the underside, making sure the edge banding was overhanging on both sides, giving the edge 100% coverage. You can look at the edges to make sure it all looks good and stuck. Then I typically use a scrap piece of wood to apply some pressure after the iron. After repeating that process to all the different parts, the next step was to trim the edges flush with the surface. Rockler actually makes a tool for this task, but I couldn't find mine, so I used a chisel instead. If you go this route, you just wanna make sure to keep it flat or it can dig into the veneer, as I did here. No worries though, there are solutions to all of the problems. To fix this, I grabbed some DAPT Rapid Fuse, which only has a 30 second set time and sticks to just about anything. Just a tip, I use a piece of tape on the end of my finger to press into the glue. This way I don't get my finger all glued up. Okay, my big defect was fixed, so I carried on with the edge banding. I recommend making yourself comfortable as it does take a second to cover so many parts. I typically use my armor workbench as a workstation that can move from side to side on the larger pieces like the tops. All right, and now that the pieces are made and prepped, it is time to start assembling things together. Let me pause real quick and thank this video sponsor, which is CrowdCow. CrowdCow is a marketplace for high quality meats that creates a meaningful connection between the farmer and the customer so people can know and appreciate exactly where their food comes from, all while getting higher quality meat and seafood that tastes better. You can build your own box by exploring their high quality beef, pork, chicken, and seafood. Each cut is vacuum sealed, frozen at the peak of freshness, and sustainably shipped directly to your door. All of the meats are no growth hormones or unnecessary antibiotics. You can buy meat that is grass-fed, pasture-raised, or wild-caught. I love that every package is fully recyclable. Even the foam is biodegradable foam that can be used to start the grill. 
Use my link crowdcal.com slash April in order to get $15 off your first order. You can also save an additional 5% off everything you put in your box if you become a member. And if you click the link in the description, membership is free. Big thank you to CrowdCow for supporting what I do. Let's start with the top. To achieve the storage idea in the top, I simply used two pieces with a gap in the middle. To create this gap, I placed some blocks near the center. To not have a long dry time to wait on, I used DAP's rapid fuse instead of wood glue here. By the way, it's worth noting that since using the table, I've changed the plans for these blocks to be one solid piece. These work great for larger items like my computer, but smaller items can easily get lost and out of reach with the spaces. Attaching the top was a little bit tricky since both pieces have a bevel that should be in line on all sides once in place. I wanna have as much time to play with the arrangement here, so I switched back to using DAP's Weldwood glue here, which will give me a much longer open time to get this part nice and set. I grabbed a scrap of the three quarter to fit in the gap of one of the quarters. Then I used another scrap to hold up against the bottom bevel and project this line up to the tops. I did this on both adjacent faces and moved the top so that it would be flush on both. Then I clamped the position down. After repeating that one on a second corner, I was very happy with the result, so I gathered up some weights and let that glue dry. While that was drying, I started prepping the legs to be attached, which first needed sanding. I grabbed a roll of simple strap, which you normally see me using to tie boards down in my truck. But since it's rubber and stretchy, I decided to wrap it a few times around my armor top and use it as a sanding pad. I used 220 to make sure I didn't sand through the veneer here. Now on to making up the leg assembly. This part is pretty simple. The main thing to pay attention to is the direction of things. Each leg needs to be facing the correct way and the structure connecting the two has a matching bevel that also needs to be facing the correct way. I used a little bit of weld wood here and two screws per, making sure to countersink the screw head so that I could plug them later. I repeated that process to create the other three sets. However, I will tell you now that I ended up changing this design slightly to make the end product more stable. You'll see what I mean in just a few minutes. For now, let's go ahead and attach the legs. For this to work, the plan is that each set will be slightly offset from the corresponding set. The tall set will be placed on the outside and the short set will be placed on the inside. I'm using a strip of piano hinge on each leg to create the pivot point. I started by attaching the hinge to the legs first and just made sure the leg and the hinge were flat on any surface. Right now, it doesn't need to be in position. After getting those screws set, I took my time to line up my legs, then attach the hinge to the top. Since these small screws are so easy to strip, I always use a hand driver to thread them in instead of a drill. After getting the first end, I repeated with the remaining three, working from the outside, most legs, and going inwards. It's important to take your time here and attach these square or they won't fold up properly in the end. My idea, which seems simple but turned out to be quite tricky, was for the fold up pair of legs to blend into the design. At the end of the day, I want the function of being able to make it tall when needed, but I want it to still look great as a lower coffee table since I imagine that's where it will be the majority of the time. And I must say, I do like the way it looks with the tall legs folded up. After getting all four mounted, I flipped the table over to see how it looked and felt. I love the way it looked, but it was a tad bit shaky when in the tall position. In order to fix that, I actually completely remade the legs with a slightly different design. I half lapped in one of the rails, then actually added in a second. It has to be small because everything on the underside is already a tight squeeze, but these changes made a big difference. Okay, last problem to solve is to hold the legs up when they aren't in use. To fight gravity, I simply used magnets for this. After marking the needed location, I used a four snare bit to counter bore in a hole in the leg. Next, I transferred that hole location to the table surface and countered bored a hole there as well. I cleaned it out good and then used a few drops of rapid fuse to adhere the metal to the surrounding wood. Be sure to test and pair the magnets before gluing these in place. You wanna make sure that they are facing the direction where they are attracting and not opposing. So the problem is, is whenever you're trying to open these guys, there's nothing to keep them open whenever you're trying to switch them around. So I'm gonna add a magnet right here and right here to just keep it snapped in place. Okay, now let's give it a test. Let's see if it holds. 
Let's just hold it upside down. Yes. Wow. Shake it. Nice. Yeah. Last part of the process is the most satisfying, which is applying a coat of finish to it and watching the grain come to life. Be sure to check out my website where I have plans and templates for not only this project, but plenty of others as well. Also, leave me a comment down below and let me know your thoughts on my coffee table. I will see you on my next video. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you would like another project to tackle, don't forget that I have templates for this folding Adirondack chair. Of course, it's an Adirondack chair, but then you can tuck it away into this nice sleek profile for either storing it during winter or just simply after a party. You can click right here to get your templates.